Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank all of you for being here today. Um, last month when Director Mueller appeared before this committee, I stated that I agree with those who believe that greater transparency about the requests that governmental entities are making to Internet companies and providers will help inform the discussion that we're having on balancing national security with um, privacy rights and civil liberties. Um, one of the questions that I asked the director was how the FBI and the Department of Justice will respond to the request by Google that it be permitted to provide reports of the number of FISA national security requests it receives as well as their scope. And at the time, Director, um, director Mueller noted that this was being looked at. And so I was wondering, Mr. Cole, if you're able to share with us what the response is to this request. Um, unfortunately, this is a matter that is currently before the court it's in litigation, so I can't say too much about it other than to reiterate what Director Mueller said, which is this is a matter that we are, in fact, looking at and take seriously. Now, we do have some data that is out there already because in March of this year, um, Google worked with I believe Google worked with the DOJ and the FBI to disclose in broad strokes the number of national security letters that Google receives, correct? That's correct. And, um, and so we do have some information. Do we know whether that information that was released has had any impact um, on national security? Uh, generally, it's hard to tell unless you have a substantial period of time afterwards as to whether or not it has an impact. So we haven't had enough time yet. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the, the public also now knows that the telephone metadata um, collection is under Section 215, um, the business records provision of FISA, and that allows for the collection of tangible things. Um, but we've also seen reports of a now defunct program connecti or collecting email metadata. With regard to the email metadata program that is no longer being operated, can you confirm that the authority used to collect that data was also Section 215? It was not. It was the Pen Register Trap and Trace Authority under FISA, which is slightly different, but it amounts to the same kind of thing. It, it does not involve any content. Mm -hmm. It is, again, only to and from. Uh, it doesn't involve, uh, I believe, information about identity. It's just email addresses. So it's, it's very similar, but not under the same provision. And could you have used Section 215 to collect that information? Uh, hard to tell. I'd have to take a look at that. Because um, I think it's important for us to know whether or not um, there's any limitations on the types of information within Section 215 that you know protect you, prevent you from collecting whether it's email metadata, or um, or GPS and geolocation information, et cetera. You know, how broad is that that authority? Uh, again, it's only as broad as what the courts can find under 215 that is relevant. But uh, there's different authorities in FISA, so we'd have to look to see how those all work together. Mr. Litt, were you going no, to? I was just going to say that, that, that it's important to remember that the 215 authority allows you to acquire existing records and documents, and, it, and it's limited to that. Although you could argue that geolocation information may also be existing, and would you consider that to be metadata as well? I, I think that the, uh, the director of the National Security Agency has, has stated that uh, we're not collecting that uh, under Section 215 and that. Uh, uh, we would come to the Congress and consult with the Congress before any decision was made to do so. But you understand it's important for us to know what the, the breadth and limitations are um, as we look at policy, and clearly there's some confusion here right now. Um, so we need to understand um, how it's being used and what information might be collected so we can make sure intent's delivered appropriately. Um, so I agree with the President's view that we need to set up a national conversation on balancing privacy and security, but um, in order to have that conversation, have a productive conversation, we need information that's going to help fuel that conversation, information like the, the breadth of Section 215, et cetera. And so I hope we can continue that and, have, and get access to um, more information so that we can have a productive discussion going forward. And thank you for your time. I yield back. Thank the gentlelady from Washington. The chair will now recognize the gentleman from Texas.